decent human being. Well, I, I, yeah. money is money. You know, I, a wise man once said that. I think it was you. I feel like yeah. he's gone to the dark side. But I mean, we'll see. Hopefully he doesn't try to injure Joe Burrow in the playoffs. We'll see. I can't really believe that the player would try to injure another player. Like, that's just... Seem- Podcast. Yeah. I'm your host, Ali McDook. Yeah. I'm joined as always by Dr. Roji. Thank Roger, you, Roger. Roger. And John, Sonny, and Cher. Sheeran. Wow. Yeah. Two in one. Like the alliteration there? Yeah. Yeah. And HR is in the room. Yeah. HR. Yeah. yeah. Fighting for our rights, our human rights. Talking about, of course. Um, Brigida Gencio. Yeah. Bridget. I thought we were going like Brigadier General. And I was Bridget like, oh, Jankars. Cool. Exactly. You don't even know how to say Brigadier. So, guys, we have a lot actually to talk about today, which is, yeah. which is kind of a strange considering where we are in the season. It yeah, we're out day. of it. We're off season. The off season. And uh, really breaking news just a couple hours ago but we'll get to that soon before that we have to of course talk about brinks.tv now you can go to brinks.tv and watch a lot of interesting shows there's so many new shows by so many of the most important people in our country mm-hmm. we're all holding and, our breath uh, Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, and unfortunately we can't. Tell if we this can. is cheap internet or just like a healthy use of a pregnant pause. It, it it kind of, it kind of seems like the sort of mishap that would happen on communist state television. That's the vibe I get from whenever Daddy was talking. I kind of like this part of the show, though. Yeah, I like yeah. this. Were He's so cute. Him? He's so cute when he can't talk. I know. He's a cuddly, cute little guy. So, so what is the news about Obojigansky? Because I, I see that it's on the list of things to talk about, but I, I didn't. I would, I've been traveling. Hold up. Wait, wait, wait. Let's get to bigger news. Can, can we talk about your new, your new fit there, Hoji? Do you like it? I do. I do. Well, wait. and I think we got to talk about like, oh, you and I are yeah. matching. Yeah, I, I, I actually gained weight to fit into this shirt. It's com- it's yeah, me, yeah, me too. <laughs> They gave Same me a, f- there were four X's and two L's on the shirt they sent me. And I was like, I only have one L. But in remember, guys, we're also on an audio medium. So for those who can't uh, see. Ah. Yeah. So what, what exactly are you guys wearing? John, okay. good looking out. Yeah. He's, he's, he, sh- he should be the host. I yeah. am wearing a Believe in the Podcast hat with a Believe in the Podcast a, a, a t-shirt and everybody knows my favorite t-shirts are black t-shirts because those are the rock and rolliest types of t-shirts a black a, a, back in the day that was like your uniform when you were a rock band you wore black t-shirt and blue jeans and me i would wear birkenstocks and we got to put like you got to take a little cheese grater to it yeah in a place or two make make yourself look edgy but it's the B-L-E-A-B. well i sweat a lot so that's just natural <laughs> it's the bleav t-shirt and so Hoji and I are rocking those today, but what we are really interested in, so Believe started uh, like the merch part of their site, I think, recently, and so um, was kind enough to send us some things so that we can rock those and support them. But we can also put DNH Sports gear on the merch site, and we would love to know like what 
what should we put on there? Yeah, actually, Bridget, I'm glad you brought that up because Daddy and I have gone back and forth and John too on what the Daddy Hoji DH Sports t-shirt should look like. And I and and I have favored a cartoonish sort of the old drawings type. You know, very simple and just DH Sports. No irony, so, no sarcasm. I would appreciate if the fans in the comment section would write, what would you like a DH Sports t-shirt, fan merch t-shirt to look like? And, and Bridget and John, I'd love to hear from you guys too, what you think. But those who can't speak on the show, those who have no voice, the voiceless, yeah. I would love to hear. A lot of, lot of uh, chatter from the voiceless, if I, if I do say so myself. But So let us get back to what really matters. Yes, we do want to sell on merch, as they call it. So please tell us, yeah. Tell us what you would pay the most money for. Put that in the comments. And, uh, but also first we have to talk about Brinks.tv because Courtney is going to, is breathing down our neck with this. But uh, the latest podcast on Brinks.tv is actually hosted by Rudy Giuliani. Wow. And it is called Just Do It. And obviously after years of being a federal prosecutor and mayor and what have you, he's finally decided that the best legal advice to tell any of his clients is just do it. Whatever you yeah. want to do, just do it. So, so a disclaimer for all those out there, everything Dadio says is on Brinks TV is usually yeah. wrong. It's but the then sometimes he'll, he'll, he'll trick you. You never know. Yeah, you never yeah. know what you're going to get. Yeah. yeah, but this one's also, definitely look, wrong. You definitely also want to subscribe to this show if you're watching and turn on notifications. We're on YouTube, the Nature Sports, yeah. and share it with your friends. If you know somebody, if you like the show, you have to find five people. If you're not going to pay for the show, you have to find at least five people who like yeah. the show and tell them to like the show. Otherwise, bad things will happen in your life. It's like yeah. a chain letter. You know, Daddy, I wonder if Brinks could get a podcast from my girlfriend, Amber. She's kind of down on her luck career-wise. I think they already have one. Uh, we will talk about that next week. Yeah, I think they already have one lined up, yeah. But okay, guys. Let us go to Cincy Newsy. It's all the news yeah. about the, the team. So Larry Ogunjobi just signed with the Steelers. Very a strange decision there. Yeah. But not not so strange when you look at the pay the payday. Yeah. And so he is jobless no more. He's Larry Ogun jobless no more. And I gotta say that's pretty clever. Yeah. But but harsh. Kind of demeaning, yeah. Yeah, well, no longer valid, but you know. I really, it has the sensitivity of a seven-year-old, which is exactly what you know you'd expect. Dad, you has always had a lot of contempt for the unemployed. I don't know yeah. if you guys knew that. Yeah. Well, they need to try harder. But yeah. so that is John. How does he fit on that defense? And what do the Bengals? We talked about this last week. What the Bengals do from here? Really, nothing. You were saying we'll just wait until September. But really, I mean. How far is he away from being 100%? How does he fit? What is it? Stefan to it? He'd be taking the place of? I mean, that defensive line is already pretty intimidating. What, what's, what are they going to look like now? It hasn't been as intimidating as it has been in recent years. They lost J Javon Hargrave. They're losing Stefan to it, even though he hasn't really played that much recently. They still have Cam Hayward, who I think is more of like the, the three technique in that scheme. But it is a little bit of, of a classic 34 defense where you have guys playing multiple gaps. And that was kind of what Ogan Joby was doing in Cleveland. And I think one of the reasons why he wanted to go to the Bengals in the first place is because he was a better scheme fit for what the Bengals were doing on passing downs. And that's where Ogan Joby saw his best year production wise as a pass rusher. So I'm interested to see if he re returns to what his role was with the Browns because he's going back to a similar defensive front there, but that defense for Pittsburgh has kind of evolved in recent years. So maybe they will still have him as a one gap defender, but I think, yeah, the logical explanation is he, he will replace Stefan to it on a one year deal and try to reestablish his market for 2023 when he inevitably joins the Baltimore Ravens and completes this AFC North circuit of his. Yeah. Not good news for, for us, but John, also another thing related to the Steelers Drop in the bucket. that impacts us is um, Minka Fitzpatrick. Minka. Yeah. No. He signed. My me, Minka. Me, yeah, my me, Minka. He signed with uh, the Steelers' new contract, $18 million a year. A lot of people are like, oh, well, you know, Jesse Bates is better than him. So now Jesse Bates is pushed out of our price range. Well, uh, let, let us. Guys, I want to ask you two things, guys, John. Jesse yeah. Bates is gone. 
get used to it. John, I want to ask John though. John, two things. First of all, who, how do you compare the two players? And second of all, what is the perception of these two players on the free agent market? So they might be different things. Maybe you say that Bates Perceived is a superior value. player. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, John. Please, yeah. John. You got to remember, John. Minka was traded for a first-round pick two years ago in 2019 from a Dolphins team that was like outright tanking during yeah. Brian Flores' first year. He's traded for a first-round pick because he was a first-round pick, and he came in with really high expectations, but the Dolphins didn't really know how to use him. They used him more as like a slot, slot cornerback because that was kind of what he did at Alabama. The Steelers kind of transformed him into a single high safety where he's been for the past three years, and he's been much better. That's really what he's best for. That's where he's kind of natural, and he's a really good player there. Now, he's not the most consistent tackler, a lot like Jesse Bates, but when he's in those coverages, I think he displays great instincts. He displays great ball skills. He intercepted Joe Burrow this past season when they played – in week three, like he's a really good player. And because he has that distinction of a guy that was traded for a first round pick, he's made, I think, a couple of Pro Bowls. I think he was a first team all pro. He has the accolades of a high quality player. And because he is this next safety to get paid, the Steelers wanted to retain him because they traded a first round pick for him. They were willing to make him now the highest paid safety in the league on an average annual value basis. I don't think his guaranteed money exceeds what uh, like Jamal Adams got with, with the Seattle Seahawks. So that market for guaranteed money is still in like the mid 30 million. And that's still an area that I don't expect the Bengals to reach or even come close to when negotiating with Jesse Bates. So I, f I feel, like, feel like this deal didn't really impact a lot with the Bengals in negotiations. I think they would have been fine raising the average annual value, but they're not going to touch this range of guaranteed money. And it's not like Minka just completely put it out of the question because he didn't exactly raise that market. So, John, you mentioned ball handling skills. This isn't basketball. I mean, they're not spinning the ball on their finger. They're it's not saying anything about ball handling. Legs. He just finds the ball in the air. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Wanted to clarify. Yeah. Well, you know, I actually just right now I was texting Jeff Hobson, the great Jeff Hobson. While we were doing the show. Now, I right think now, HR, yeah. that is a problem. Yeah. Yeah, no? that, I mean, you've got to prioritize. To we are literally like. I am working show. so hard. I'm constantly trying to get people on the show, even during the show. And not, I deserve a bonus. I'm, you know what? I'm going to give myself a bonus. Bill, but not myself. paying the internet bill. Yeah, I'm going to actually carve out a new position Wait, th th that th I would This fit. makes so much sense. He is trying to sabotage his own internet so he can justify raising his own wage to get. Okay, let's move internet. on. Let's, let, yeah. let's move on. Let's focus on the show. The so, fact to you're not but Jeff Hobson, podcast related tweet. Yeah, or Jeff. Text, yeah. No, it was related because I want to talk about Jeff Hobson's incredible. Let's talk about it. Articles he's putting up on Bengals.com. And he talked about the Zacation or Zacation. Yeah. Zach Taylor. On vacation. vacation in Cincinnati. Yes. So he said, for the first time, I want to just relax and explore Cincinnati. I never got a chance to do that. And so he's going around Cincinnati. So I, because Zach Taylor watches this show, mostly to get ideas from John, yeah. I want each one of us to say where you recommend that Zach goes to explore with his family while he's on vacation. Wow. Yeah. Does he have kids? He does. He has about eight boys. Yeah. Okay. What's not the, true? I said about. It can't be false if I say about. I didn't give so a precise number. I, I vaguely remember when my stepchild, my stepboy, which was one? A, uh, a Ferdinand, okay. when he was like, I don't know, 13. I vaguely remember a big Toy Story castle where on your birthday they would send you a key and you would go to the castle. I do not make this up. And you would open a door and pick any present you wanted on your birthday for free. And I believe it was an Erlanger. Johnny's or... Toys. Johnny's Toys. Yeah. That's now they are the furniture store. There's a furniture store that uh, now they have the Johnny Toys castle. Wait, yeah. so Johnny Toys is no longer a toy store? No, but they still have that. I, I they... know because I signed up for my birthday. Well, you, I went to actually, yeah. You can pick any piece of furniture you out on your birthday. No, you get a toy. They have the castle in the furniture store. Oh, okay. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. So, so I would not go there. I scratched that, that off no, my don't list. I recant. Okay. I recant. Do well, it's great deals on the furniture. They're don't really take your kids to a furniture store. No. Okay. Okay. So Bridget, uh, Jungle Gym. I choose Jungle Gym. Jungle Gym is a good one. But, yeah. but what about like more the stuff he hasn't heard about, Bridget? Go to John first. John has John. more experience in Cincinnati. I'm still John knows the under. John John knows the underbelly. The yeah, smoky, not everybody, dirty underbelly. They don't, yeah. 
the underworld of Cincinnati. They... John, John, John has got that goth kind of yeah. vibe. He gives me that secret life, double lifestyle vibe. You so need some John. secret handshakes to get yeah. into those places. John. What's the wild clubs, the weird secret places that maybe me, maybe Zach could go to? Very glad you asked. For my four years at the University of Cincinnati, there was this bar kind of at the south side of campus. It's called the Mad Frog. And it was just off of campus, so it was just entering that uh, residential part of Clifton, Ohio. We didn't really think to ever go there just because it was just outside of campus area and it wasn't really near any other bars. But we were on this bar crawl one night. It was, it was like our senior year. And we're like, you know what, guys? This, we're never going to have another opportunity to go to the Mad Frog. We have no idea what, what's inside of there. We have no idea what the atmosphere is. We have these perceptions and these narratives about what it is, but we haven't actually experienced it ourselves. We don't want to be phonies. So we wanted to just go there one time and experience it, and it was unlike anything I ever experienced before. It was the first metal, death metal concert I'd ever been in. It was like 100 of us packed in like sardines in an area that was like 25 by 20 feet. My ears didn't work for like three days afterwards. I really feel wow. like if there's just a place to unwind and just get away from the rest of the world, a heavy metal concert at the Mad Frog just outside of Uris and Staddy, that's where Zach Taylor should go. Now, now I, Zach I, I is, I believe, that. in his mid-30s, is he not? I, I, yeah. I mean, he, he gives me like a Sunday school kind of... Yeah, John, I feel, like, I feel like Zach I feel always like wants at least to half of his kids have some type of young. practical meaning to his work right and he went into kansas city and it was really loud and the communication was not very good i really feel like this is the chance for him to experience something new Practice. while also getting the experience of communicating when the decibels are in the 200s i just feel like about about eight or nine of his kids are probably too young for that environment but if okay. you're asking me bridget okay go ahead bridget i'm gonna go and this yeah. is not specific but i was new to cincinnati nine years ago and the thing I always tell visitors or people who are always like, Cincinnati, is that like a cool place to Ooh. go? Or like, it's Ohio, I don't know what to think about it. But I, I, I would say go on a food tour, Zach. Cincinnati has some of the most amazing restaurants. Like I was just at Wodka Bar on Main Street on Saturday night, it's like a Ukrainian Polish restaurant like the most amazing pierogi like babka platters I, pick like different kinds of food go on a food tour you will not be disappointed yeah okay. like a real taste of cincinnati kind of thing i like that yeah i mean there's a taco bell has if, a lot if, of branches i've noticed does he does he yeah. have a tesla I, I, I have so. a Tesla. I have a Tesla because I don't what think I we've what, sufficiently stocked him. What enough. I enjoy, what I enjoy, I I I have noted. You, you thank you for pointing out Burroughs Porsche, by the way. What I used to really enjoy is just the smooth ride with my car over the Ohio River. You know, there's a spot in I think it's in it's close to where Villa Hills ish area down by the river, and you just get in with your car and and you, it's a barge. Oh, you just eight. Go. You the highway eight. Oh, highway yeah. eight. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's that, yeah. Well, I will say this, and we're at the other times. So I have to rush, but I it's, it strongly recommend you go to St. Vincent's de Paul, uh, St. Vincent de Paul's. Uh, there is all of the locations are worth visiting. Wait a minute, you know, there's the one in Evandale, there's the Mount Washington one, the West End Hills, the outlet store, the Coleraine Avenue one. I would go to all of them. They're all fascinating. Thrift store. Yeah, wow. that's my recommendation. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You, you would be a wonderful date. Yeah. Well, okay. Now I want to get to the topic of the show, the most important topic. John, John did some incredible research, shared it with me. And could we pull up the graphic, actually, that's about showing the teams and where they are. Oh, that's hard to read. Wow. About where it's they the are. It's the matrix. Can we, can we zoom in at the top? There we go. Okay. So John, tell us what's going on here. I see the colors. Is it in Korean? <laughs> yeah, John. I feel please. like it's just really pointless to try to explain all of this in a matter of a few minutes. Essentially, PFF salary cap guru, Brad Spielberger, whatever his name is, he analyzed all 32 teams in terms of how many players did they draft are still on the team, what is their cap spaces for the next three years, how much money is prorated in terms of signing bonuses, and how much of their top 51 players are valued on the open market. He computed all of this and came away with a rankings 
in terms of cap health, which means how much cap space you have right now, how much cap space you're going to have for the future, and how much flexibility you're going to have with the cap and paying any players that you have on your current roster. And the Bengals, after all of this work, came out on top as the number one team, meaning that they have cap space right now. They're expected to have cap space in the near future. They have really high valuable players, but they have the space and the flexibility to eventually pay those guys. They're not committed to other players who maybe are a little bit deeper into their careers, who maybe are going to give them diminishing marginal returns. They're not going to have any troubles of paying you know, the valuable guys on the roster right now who aren't making very much. Right now, the Bengals are set up to succeed in the present and also in the future because they're not going to be tied down by financial you know, insecurities. I know I understand that into people perpetuity. have... Yeah, exactly. Like, they're not going to... I know people have this perception that the salary cap isn't real. That's not true, and it's especially not true for the Bengals who don't, don't have like money. to ma- manipulate it and also are very broke. So with the, what the Bengals do is they play it a little bit differently. They like to, you know, put some money up front to try to incentivize guys to sign with them because they're not going to guarantee payments down the road. And because of this, this has given them some solid cap health for the coming years and that's allowed them to go forward with confidence that they're going to pay the guys like Joe Burrow, T Higgins and Jamar Chase and that is what get, makes them the number one healthiest team in terms of the salary cap. And, and, yeah. and is it yeah. fair to say then that Mike Brown is being vindicated after like 30 years? I mean, mm-hmm. it took a while for this method to work. For years, well, he's all. We've always been in great cap health. No, we no, just no, never no. Had... no, no. It's the cap health plus the success. The two yeah. go together. The well, go together. I think, think though, after like thirty-five years, years of... yeah, you're going 30 to years, hit one thirty years, thirty thirty-five years in a yeah. league that's what exactly. the Super Bowl era. We're at what it's, fifty something. That's a long. That's a long time. time. That's a long time. I mean, he's so, he's, so, he's ninety-eight years old. I don't think he's going to have another you know chance. He's, he's got a, he's got a solid. 30 years left in them. So how much is this just about luck and about getting Joe Burrow? Let's oh, 100% be a lot of it is luck. 99% Joe Burrow. Okay. It's so this all, isn't a great like, method. Like, it's just you, you no, got lucky. Hold on. This ranking has no indication on which teams are good or bad. Like in the top, you yeah. have Washington. Uh, you have the, the Jets at the sixth spot, the Dolphins Yuck. at the seven. At the bottom, you have the Saints, Eagles, uh, the Raiders, Packers, Rams, Cowboys, all Raiders. taking up like the bottom 10. That like that doesn't mean that those teams are bad right now. Most of the teams are good right now, but it's hard for them to sustain the level of success that they're on. Whereas with the Bengals, they're good right now and they can sustain the success for maybe a little bit longer than some of the other better teams. Yeah. Except, except that those other teams have money too. Well, how does that work? Cause I, so I, you showed that chart and I'm regretting, I mean, I was in college a long time ago, but I'm like, I should have paid attention in the class that taught me Excel. I should have paid attention in statistics, but like the Rams just signed a bunch of big contracts, right? They signed Donald or re-signed Donald. Did they re-sign Cup? Mm-hmm. And did they, who else did they just re-sign? Uh, the Rams. A third, Dad, third, you you, yeah. you went to college in a mall. You should explain yeah. it. But so how like how are the Rams kind of able to have? Because it seems like they have they're, their owner makes space. money. They give a staff for the big deal, right, John? They give him forty million a yeah. year. Yeah, Stan Kroenke yeah. is very. Um, he's, he's a he's a mogul. Let's, let's just put well, it at that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't hope too much on Stafford. I think they wasted that money. He's got the karma. He's got the karma payday coming for him after he didn't well, have that lady who fell off the fell off the the, uh, the stage. Remember? So yeah, that, but he's got he's got the karma payoff yeah. coming his way. But he also coached Jason Brown, who was on the show last week, who was on the Mount Rushmore of greatest coaches ever, according to himself, up there with Bill Belichick and Paul. Is Brown. that the guy who was yelling at you guys? And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. When he was yelling, he, well, we needed it. We deserved it. We yeah, needed yeah. a good talking to. Br- Bridget, are you going to send our resumes over to him? Because I think like, I, like I a need few to. Weeks I got to pull those out of your files. Yeah. Because we, yeah. we are authorized to. Well, I get commission. If you, use, if you use this show to get a new job, you know, I get a percentage of your next job. That's how it works. But yep. that's how it yeah, works. So he, I don't know. I'll have to check with mm-hmm. HR, but so he oh, basically, yeah, okay. so he said Stafford is one of the five best players in, in NFL history. Oh my gosh. And he's not one that, of the, no way. 
Yeah, he said one of the five hundred best players in ever. He said that the Lions ruined him. Otherwise, he'd be five one of the five best players ever. So oh that's such What that. did he do? What has he ever done? The coach or he just the coach was at the community Stafford, college. Stafford. Coach no, I'm saying he just watched that lady. He used a lot of cuss words. No, when he was very emphatic, like I, you couldn't argue the amount of cuss words he uses. Yeah, you, believe me, you but do yeah, not. Why are we talking about Matt Stafford? I don't know what you're talking about. I asked a question yeah. about the Rams yeah. and their cap. Oh, yeah. So the, so the Rams can put money into escrow to basically d divvy out these guaranteed payments into the future. And because the Bengals only make money based off of revenue sharing in the NFL system, they unfortunately don't have the capital to do that. Yeah. Thank you, John. That was so clear. That was so clear. That's the difference between going to a real college and going to college in a mall, daddy. -o. I keep telling you that. He well, went, he got his degree after like two weeks. Yeah. Well, I will say, John, that is how you become. Also, and I don't think that the Bengals don't have enough cash to do that. I think they probably do. I don't think any NFL team is cash poor, regardless of the, the lack of, of opportunities or financial gains that the Bengals have outside of just owning the NFL. But I do feel like they also don't want to do that. So I think there's yeah. Does winning the Super Bowl make them it, richer, the Bengals? Only if it means that? they can sell more merch, as yeah, they say. But no, it and doesn't. Maybe they can, they have I mean, a someone's got to do a study. Someone's got to do a study. Well, Has I think helped? I, maybe one Super Bowl, not a huge boost, but I think if you, if you, you know, if you're a trendy team, you know, like maybe the Chiefs, you know, got a lot of new fans because people I feel like the Bengals have a lot of new fans. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, let's move on. Let's move on. So, John, John. The Bengals linebackers. What about them? Okay. What about Talk they, to us. This is very interesting. So, whoa! I thought we were not allowed to use bad words. No, James. What? You said yeah. getting bitchier all the time. No, <laughs> Bet Betcher, Betcher. That's the James Betcher, is the coach. Are you? He's the linebackers coach. Yeah, we can't use that. We just lost five dollars. That's actually but, an okay word to say on NBC, CBS, Fox, and not on Brinks. You just labeled it a cuss word. All right. Not on Brinks. Yeah, but you don't so, get written up for that. It was too funny. So look, the Bengals have about five. Seven linebackers who are rehabbing right now, John, right? And one of them is Joe Bachi. And uh, obviously, there's also who, who he filled in for Logan Wilson after, uh, but then he tore his ACL. Then you have, it's interesting, you have this guy, Clay Johnston, who I, did, I didn't know he existed, but he, he also got injured, but he made a key stop He's in the division. Hero. Yeah, he, caught, he stopped the two point conversion of Derrick Henry in the divisional round. We have uh, Jermaine Pratt, who they say looks very intentional in his work throughs and his drills. You know, he's treating everything like it's a, a real play. Intense, not intentional. Maybe no, he's intentionally he intense. Intention. Intentional, they said intentional. Yeah. And Akeem Davis Gaither uh, and Keandre Jones right now are filling in for all these guys rehabbing. And then, oh, there's Marcus Bailey, who's on our show, who he filled in for Logan Wilson for four games. He played about 40 snaps a game. That's a lot of guys, John. That's a lot of linebackers who we had in the mix. And obviously, Logan Wilson, Jermaine, Jermaine Pratt are our two best. Who's the number three guy when they're all healthy? Yeah, but you notice, like, that was a lot of names you just mentioned. And not once did you ever feel like the defense kind of fell off, where in years past, you know, their linebackers would be terrible and it would be the scapegoat for why the defense was not doing very well. But now this defense is pretty set up well where they can just have serviceable guys in the middle of the field kind of just fill gaps and take care of the monotonous work because everyone else around them is very competent. But outside of Logan Wilson and Jermaine Pratt, like they have Akeem Davis Gaither who plays a lot when they play the Ravens when they like to go three linebackers. And I feel like Marcus Bailey might be the more traditional, classic, you know, off ball linebacker out of the guys that aren't in the top two, but I feel like Davis Gaither, because he's been here the longest, along with Bailey, he plays the most when they have three linebackers on the field and his versatility as a guy who can drop back in coverage and who blitz off the edge, he allows them to do more things when when he's on the field. So he's probably linebacker three, but I understand the argument of Marcus Bailey being the more traditional guy and definitely at, just as, if not even more talented than Davis Gaither, because the only reason why Bailey was drafted so late is because he was injured in Purdue. Wow, John, that is that clutch. Was, Did you wow. see that? That was like that was Steph amazing. Curry. 
Yeah, that was at the, the buzzer. You are the of this show. Where is this buzzer coming from? Am I doing that? That is no. when we run out of time mm. yeah. for each segment. Yeah. yeah. Everybody um, gets a buzzer because Bridget complained last week. She said, oh, I'm the only one Oh, this buzzer. one's way more palatable, but I thought it was like someone's like reminders on their alarm clock. It's exactly the same one that yeah. we have for Bridget. Yeah. I just so, wanted to add a non-analyst um, comment. So after the, li- the Bengals-Lions game, uh, I don't know if you all remember, we oh, yeah. um, Blew annihilated them, them. Yeah. And uh, Davis Gaither, it, it, it's been circular. I don't know if you've seen on Twitter the, um, is it, it's the Joe Mixon selfie. You know, CJ mm-hmm. Uzama came, knocked the phone out. Joe Mixon came and did that fan selfie. Well, after the Bengals won, um, Davis Gaither took my phone and took a selfie with me. Wow. He's so, going places. Why didn't yeah. you go viral? What, what the hell? Yeah, not, great question. Why didn't Bengals, I? Huh? It's not yeah. a video, but so he's a good dude. He was really sweet to do that. He was. Let us move on. Longest snapper competition, John. So oh God. Yeah. I'm really struggling here. <laughs> so, I, what do you mean? I, Clark I would... Harris is one of the most beloved members of the team. He's been around since I think nineteen eighty. How do you analyze a competition yeah. of long snappers? John, because it made for a good title. See, I, and can you explain he, the title? He has a lot to learn. The UDFA, what's UDFA? Adomitis. Undrafted free agent, Cal oh. Adomitis. Adomitis that he has a lot to learn. That's you pretty see? darn good. Yeah. See, John, that's, that's why Shakespearean. you put that. Yeah, thank you. Did you just make this topic just for the headline? Yes. Yes, yes John. Yes. That's how he is. It's the is. off season. John, pay attention. Look, here's the thing. I want to talk about this, John. Again, he Jeff didn't Hobson, get enough love as a child. Again, Jeff, Jeff Hobson, who I wanted to have done the show, he had a blog about this. And he talked about how Darren Simmons was saying the this job is it's he says you got to get down and you got to block people. Yeah. It's a greasy, grimy position Ooh. to play. Yeah. And that is what he was talking about. Adomitis has to learn, he has to get greasy, he has to get grimy, he has to get nasty, he has to get a slimy. And John. How do you out a slime somebody? How does that work? How is he going to be? Yeah, that this is a position he's I don't not understand. Biting. Yeah, dude, John. I think I'm out on Darren Simmons. He's just he's too old for me at this point. He's still he's still mad at Clark Harris for not going into the locker room for the Super Bowl halftime. A halftime that's 30 minutes. He's not gonna do anything useful in a half hour. He just wanted to see the the, the halftime show with with Dre and Snoop and everyone. Like as what, did we. What, all. what is Clark Harris going to do in the locker room? What is the long snapper gonna learn? from game notes about the first half when they're not even getting the ball in the start of the second half. Oh, there's a blocking and, assignment he has to do? Get get real. Get, come get on. out of here. Get this out of dumb. here. Get out of my face. And and you know what? To all those people out there who don't even know what a long snapper is, John, why don't you explain to them? Because they don't even know. Yeah. You he snaps know. the ball at long distance. He snaps the ball <laughs> at long yeah. distance. That's crazy. It's crazy that some people don't know that. Yeah. How far is the distance, John, for those people? 45 feet. That is wow. crazy. 45, 45 feet. feet. That's longer than the football field. We're out of yeah. time. Okay. Look, we are moving along at a great pace. And I want to really, I want to, in, it's been weeks since we've had a Hojoscope. And yes. I'm excited. It's to been far too long. It's been far too long. Yeah. So, you know, I come to you as the bearer of glad tidings and also bad tidings. The good comes with the bad, the yin and the yang. They come together. So here's the good news for all of you. There was a position last year, you all will remember, where, we were, where the Bengals were suffering. They were suffering. They were rotating guys in and out. It was the position that led to the death of our Super Bowl dreams because that's where Aaron Donald made his game-winning play and rushed from that very position. It was the position, and you guys know I'm talking about the right guard. It was the position where rookie Hakeem Adenji they tried him out. They tried out rookie Jackson Carmen. So the good news is, as you all know, we have Captain Kappa to the rescue. Captain Alex Kappa, a six foot six hunk of 306 pound, 27 year old, humbled state born in guy. And the man's amazing. When you read about this guy, he, he's played through a broken arm, he's played through a broken leg. He's like the Terminator, and he's on the Bengals. He's on our team and he's filling in that gap. That's the good news. He fits the the pattern of what we've been looking for. Tough guys who will not let anyone touch our MVP for life, Joe Burrow. 
But with the good comes the bad daddy. With the good comes the bad Bridget. With the good comes the bad John. Don't forget this. John, pay attention. Yeah, pay attention. The bad news is what changes when you get a Captain Kappa on your team? Well, what changes is you start winning. What happens when you win too much? Well, I had someone, I wouldn't call him a friend. I'd call him an acquaintance. You might know him, Billy Idol. In 1989, Billy Idol, uh, he, he had a three-week-long party at the Bangkok Hotel, Oriental Hotel in Bangkok. Monetization. Please. Monetization. It was a sex fest. It was a drug okay, fest. Okay. It went on for three weeks. Property damage. Eventually, the hotel started to send, send him bills for $250,000. That's in 1989 money. Can you imagine how much it would be today? When he refused to leave, they had to send in the military and they had to shoot him with a tranquilizer dart and carry him out on a stretcher. I kid you not. And that's how the party after three weeks ended. Now, can you imagine if in Cincinnati, this starts happening on a mass scale? We start winning. Everybody's three-week partying, sex fest, drug fest. We're all getting tranquilized. It's a mess. It's pandemonium or something like that. So that's the bad part of my hojoscope is that things can get too good as they got too good for Billy Idol, and that's my hojoscope. Wow. That was a scary. That was, yeah, that put, yeah. I'm that like the Nostradamus the of Cincinnati. Yeah. Well, I just realized I made a great error. I forgot to put a promotion section, but I remember to put a daddy care section. I don't know how that happens. I don't know if that means I'm changing as a human being and not pushing people to go to patreon.com slash dhsports or vino.app slash dhsports and patronize us, or if I'm just getting senile. But at any rate, or I Or maybe your over. heart of gold is turning into a heart Getting of, senile? A, a heart of mold. Okay, let us, just, let us just get to it, please, Bridget, yes. Yes, um, okay, so another, we're gonna talk about another gentleman who is going to make sure that Joe Burrow is not getting hit again. Um, so Jeff Hobson, which, Dedio, thank you for mentioning him numerous times, the yeah. show. Love that guy. He wrote He's great... coming on the show, by the way, soon. He's the Perfect. father of this show. He's, on vac he's going on vacation on Friday, that's why. Well, oh, that's nice. He works somewhere that gets that. Um, wish you would let us have that. Uh, so Jeff Hobson wrote this really great piece on Lel Collins and his mom, Loyetta. And it's really about like how Loyetta really got Lel Collins where he is today. So uh, if you get a chance, read the piece. I'm going to summarize a little bit because this is really what we're getting with Lel Collins, which feels just important to our culture. And these pictures are from uh, Jeff Hobson's article. I feel like I need to give credit for that. So Lel Collins was born 29 years ago and the umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck. And that's a really scary thing for a parent. And uh, Loyetta said when Lel was born and the cord was wrapped around his neck, he didn't turn blue. And she, she was scared, the doctor was scared, but like this baby was a force. And she knew this baby was going to be something special. And so um, her faith was very important to her. She turned to the Old Testament and uh, Lel's name actually in Hebrew means belonging to God. And she was like, this, this little boy is gonna, be, uh, is gonna be something special and is gonna be some, somebody to reckon with. So she raised five kids in Louisiana and one of her tenets is uh, st structure and discipline. Um, and so she talked about sparing the rod, uh, not spoiling the child, uh, or spare the rod, spoil the child, whatever it is. Um, and her work ethic really inspired him. I, I don't know if folks know this. Lel actually, he owns a record label, invests in movie productions. He owns a trucking company with his brother in Dallas. And so like, this is who we're getting. We're getting a dude who has... Oh, it looks like we're out of time. Are you hating on Lel wow. Collins? No, no, like it's just this? we're out of wow. time. That's the buzzer for everybody. But go ahead, please. Give me another well, five it seconds. It would be nice if you could actually tell me how, well, I guess I do have a little TikTok thing. You could tell me yeah. in advance how much time I have. So I'm gonna leave you with this. 
Uh, his mom asked him uh, not that long ago. She said, Lel, are you a dirty player? And he said, no, mom, I'm a tough player. There's some guys out there who are wicked and they're playing to cripple you and take you off the field. And I'm not like that. And she just looked at him and said, okay, thank you. So this is a this is a guy who is raised on the values that I think that has made this team so special over the last year. And so um, this Daddy O'Care segment is dedicated to Lel and his amazing mom, Loyetta and just what he's going to bring to our locker room and the culture. So, so, so wow. Bridget, Bridget, follow-up question. What does what does perfect mean in the Old Testament? Like Vantes perfect? Yeah, it must mean like crusher of souls or I don't know. Because it sounds like he's Naughty? the opposite. <laughs> well, I would say this. I hope that when Joe Burrow is wrapped up by pass rushers because of Lael, being there now, he's no longer going to turn blue. I hope that that is the case, that he gets some of that strength right. from Lael. Yeah. yeah. And the, but, the subheader, this is what uh, his mom always said to him. If you're weak, you're beat. And I think, yeah. I know there, uh, Joe Burrow didn't like uh, Why Not Us, so maybe this year we'll do If You're Weak, You're Beat. I like it. And I'm just still astonished that I didn't talk about patreon.com slash dh sports or vino.app slash dh sports where you can text support the show me. where you can text us obviously that is crazy that that came up i didn't do that but yeah you can go there and but really i think a lot of people should be patrons support the show because we want to get our intern back we want and, to get and, our and i want to remind back. i want to remind our special fans out there that as we sit at the start of the show Please, in the comment section on the YouTube, which you have subscribed to and turn your notifications on to, yeah. put a comment about what you'd like the DH right. merch sports shirt. Yeah. To so look many like. options for the merch. It could go in so many different directions. So yeah. please Let me do dance. that. Let me dance. And that's all we have, really. Yeah. I mean, for. Give me my song. Yeah. I'm ready. For Dr. Hodges, Dr. Gismoji. There we go. And John, Sunny, and Cher. Sheeran. And. Hey, John. I'm Daddy McDook. We will see you next time. So long as yeah. device. Don't forget to subscribe, share with your friends, turn on notifications, read John's articles on citysjungle.com. That's all we got. Yeah. <laughs>